thanks for joining us. My name is Ibrahim Sani. Uh, we are doing this show uh, in the corridors of uh, the KL Convention Centre uh, because we are attending the Hasana Forum uh, and uh, the AVPN Conference 2023. And we're talking about impact investing, we're talking about social enterprises, we're talking about how we can bring good for society and be financially viable at that. Uh, in uh, On the set right now with me is my friend, Ravret Salani, the CEO and Principal of Sky International Academy. So Ravi, uh, it's been three days. Uh, we have attended most of the talks, uh, uh, been to the marketplace, uh, the booths and many more, um, and the side uh, kind of conferences. Uh, can you give me like a, like a top view of how you think these past three days have been uh, and whether or not you're impressed or not impressed for that matter uh, on the conferences? Thanks, Ibrahim. Uh, so, Actually, uh, this whole event has been quite a surprise to me. Uh, I wasn't expecting to achieve this much in such a short You weren't time. even initially invited, right? It, That's was, how a, it, it was a last minute thing. I was yeah. supposed to be traveling to Sydney during this time, uh, but that trip got cancelled. And then I got an invitation from YH and Hasana to attend this uh, uh, conference. And uh, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, honestly, coming here. Uh, coming out of the pandemic, taking a break from work for a while. Um, and uh, what was really interesting for me was that uh, a lot of the approaches that I've been trying to put in place with uh, uh, socio-economic development through education, through TVET training in the past, um, are concepts that's very widely spoken of here. Um, I was privileged to have conversations with the likes of even uh, UBS a couple of days ago. We had lunch and they were talking about impact investing and blended financing and you know, various different working models that uh, would provide a lot more access and opportunity to marginalized communities, which is um, an area I think that Malaysia as a whole uh, still has got a lot of need for in terms of uh, how do we make uh, education more affordable mm. for specifically, let's just say, the B40 communities, mm. right? Um, and just through having a lot of discussions with you know, other guys, other players here, like even uh, uh, there's some industry partners, potential industry partners like Tata Solutions, mm. uh, uh, tech companies who are here today, uh, who are all very geared up to want to look into the idea of uh, talent development in Malaysia uh, to feed industrial needs. Um, when I spoke to uh, the, con uh, the uh, conference organizers, uh, Yasana Asana and Kazana National for that matter, um, they, they said that the one um, thing that moved the needle uh, for this conference is that they put the money managers, the capital owners, um, in the same room with uh, folks like yourselves, like Project Sky, like Sky International Academy and many more. And they are trying to see how they can uh, get the capital that is required to these social enterprises and businesses that bring about uh, impact to society. Uh, do you feel that that uh, mashup uh, is important, but more importantly, how has it that nobody has thought about this before? Uh, did you, you know, encounter with this uh, kind of thinking uh, before this? I think I think the one thing that we've always been trying to figure out is how do we how do we do this from an entrepreneurial way? You know, I think when it comes to impact, when it comes to philanthropy, uh, the the largest spectrum of the work in the past has been done through charities, through government grants. Yeah, with um, no uh, um, uh, financial viability talk in mind. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And 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 I think uh, if if we we took a, a slightly different approach and we looked at it from a, a more entrepreneurial point of view. Uh, there, there are many means and approaches we can consider to uh, sort of uh, have the revenue uh, uh, be sort of sustainable or to have renewed revenue in order for us to repeat what we're trying to do, right? Uh, speaking of um, uh, a concept that was discussed by UBS uh, yesterday, mm. Tom Hall, the president of uh, UBS Philanthropy, Mm. Um, was talking about uh, income shared agreement uh, mm. as a concept, which is uh, allows uh, you to sort of reduce the investment by mm. you know a significant amount instead of going with a, a ten million dollar investment, you can mm. come down to a three million dollar investment, and that money can sort of be renewed to be used over and over again, so you can impact a larger uh, scale of community. Mm. Um, so, so these, these, are, these are very new practices in, in the market, very new concepts in the market. Some of these practices are actually already successfully being deployed in countries like uh, West Africa, which, which to me, it's, it's a shocker. Like, we're here in Southeast Asia, and, and we're supposed to be the boom right now. 
but there's a lot of these practices that are already being deployed in Africa, which is supposed to be the next boom. So yeah. I think this conference has definitely reminded people that, hey, we don't need to be doing things the old ways. There's so many more innovative methods and all the experts are around here. I've been talking to so many people. Uh, I've ran out of a whole box of business cards yeah. just networking with people here. Yeah. And um, I, I, I personally think that they've got to do this more often and, and perhaps even bring these sort of conferences to the subject. If you look at Malaysia and where the, the classes of the poorer communities are, a lot of that sits in Borneo in Sabah today. Um, I was just uh, talking to one of the vice presidents of Yayasan Hassana yesterday and I said, wouldn't it be nice to have this conference come back to Malaysia down the road, but perhaps have it in Borneo, you know, where people from the philanthropy network can kind of see exactly uh, what's actually going on at ground level, you know. Um, we can sit here and we can dialogue all day about what's going on on ground, but it's nothing like coming and seeing it for themselves. You've been doing this for quite a bit. You've been doing this for quite a bit. Uh, you've been doing this for years now, decades yeah. actually. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, when you were doing this, because we, we knew each other for like 20 years now. That's right. Uh, I couldn't get my head around <laughs> social enterprises, bring about social impact, even then. And even today, I am still, you know, trying to learn yeah. um, uh, about uh, this area uh, uh, of concern and how and what my role is yeah. into bringing this whole conversation uh, more to light. Maybe you can share with us in terms of the evolution of how impact uh, work is being done through society over the past two decades. And is there an improvement, so to speak, when it comes to bringing about social enterprise uh, to the ground? Yeah. You know, uh, Ibrahim, if you, if, if you would allow me to, I would like to revisit a conversation we once had when we were in uni. Okay. Uh, I believe we were... At That's a, like in the 18th century, dude. In the 18th century. <laughs> and, and we were... You know, we used to spend hours till, you know, the middle of the night debating about how do we better society. And I know it was pretty heavy subject for us at that age, but mm. I think that's probably what got us connected back then. Um, from then until now, I can see how there's been a lot of change, actually. Uh, being in this space, working with a lot of other like-minded people, especially the younger generation, I am very inspired. I mean, I... Back then, it was, we, we, we were sort of waiting for that day. You know, when are we going to have this sort of change makers come to play? When are we going to see the Avengers of Malaysia sort of uh, mm. surface? But right here in this conference, I, I reconnected with so many of them and uh, I'm excited to be back in the scene. You know, I, 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 I can't help but to be really um, like a five-year-old that's just waiting to see what we're going to do in the next 10 years mm. here in Malaysia mm. and then support the region as a regional hub. Mm. Talking about social impact, um, I started off a project in Marble Island back in 2014 where we basically set up a vocational learning centre in the middle of a, of a village. Mm. Uh, and uh, the, the challenge that we saw at that time was that you had a lot of industry development, a lot of resorts uh, for scuba diving, recreational activities, uh, but a lot of the local youth were not able to access these jobs because they lacked certain skills, you know, the soft skills, uh, the vocational skills to work in these resorts. And um, it, it wasn't something that was planned. You know, I was just basically bumming around the island one yeah. day, scuba diving, uh, taking yeah. a break from business, and got to know the local community. And, and one, of the, one of the very bold kids one, uh, one day just asked me, he said, hey, uh, uh, Encik Ravi, um, kalau Encik Ravi ada sekolah di Kuala Lumpur, kenapa tak nak buka sekolah di sini untuk kita? And when, 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 when he had asked that question, I was like, You're stumped. How do you say no to no, that? No, you can't. How do you say no to that? And, and, and yesterday... Um, I don't even know where Marble Island is. Oh, so Marble honest. Island is off the uh, district of Sampurna, uh, which okay. uh, it's about 10, hour, 10 to 12 hours of travel yeah. from here. Yeah. Um, I used to go to the island every month uh, after we started the school. Yeah. And uh, it would be, you know, uh, taking a car from here to the airport, flying out into Tawau. Tawau, we've got to go on a road trip, which is a pretty bumpy road through yeah. the estates into Samporna. Then we get on a one-hour boat onto the island. By the time you get in there, you are pretty yeah, naked, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it, it's really remote. But it's beautiful. Uh, I, I kept going back there, not just because of the work, but also I just found the people to be very... Uh, they're just full of heart, mm. right? And, and, and through this, what I've learned is 
sometimes we try so hard here, it's so easy to work with some of these communities because all they're looking for is the opportunity. Mm. Give them a shot, basically. Just give them a shot. Just give them a shot and you will see them fly. I've okay. Now, uh, uh, one of the biggest conversations that we, when we talk about um, social enterprises and social impact is on funding. Yeah. Continuous funding. Not one-off, not like a, like a grant kind of basis, but a funding just like a business, like a cash flow situation. And as far as, uh, as, as I've known you, it's always been the topic of conversation. How do you get funds? Previously, it was through corporates, you know, yeah. the banks, you know, the big guys, the GLCs and the likes. Yeah. Has that been the issue moving forward? Do you feel that, you know, uh, private equity uh, money managers, uh, venture capitalists or, or startup founders, whatever, do you feel that they need to be taking more in an active participation here in this world? Yep. Certainly, I think uh, you know those were the days when uh, financial institutions were only measuring a single bottom line, which is financial profits. Where these days you got to look into other areas like social impact, the environment. Uh, as a matter of fact, we are currently restructuring our organisation right now to measure a triple bottom line. Where we want to measure, of course, financial profits to provide returns to the investors. Uh, we want to measure social impact and also how we're keeping the environment intact for the next generation. Okay. Now, that's definitely an area of, uh, I would say, uh, quite a, a hack for us to get into because I think uh, there are very few organizations that have actually managed to achieve that and we are still sort of trying to learn from them as well. How do we sort of break into measuring a triple bottom line instead of just a single or double bottom line as a social enterprise? Um, that is the big problem that I've been speaking to uh, when it comes to uh, capturing a uniform, auditable me uh, 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 measuring system. Um, uh, Dato' Amiru Faisal, MD of Kazana, was talking about uh, Samara uh, as a mechanism. Uh, Shahira is talking about social return on investment yep. mechanism. Um, uh, there's no international kind of standard in terms of how to measure this. It's uh, it's actually quite crucial because how else are you going to be talking to each other and understanding the impact uh, of what your work is versus my work. Yeah. Um, it's not the same as, say, for instance, the financial world, the commercial industries, where if I give you a uh, you know, PBT, um, ROI, ROE, immediately you know what I'm talking about yeah. and immediately it's <coughs> measurable and trust because there's a, a bunch of audit firms out there that is giving me assurance that the way I measure is accurate and uh, depict the true and fair uh, way of accounting. Is this the hindrance then, this triple bottom line measurement that you're looking for in terms of trying to find value to get I, to the investors? I, I, think you, <clears throat> I think you nailed it right there when you said that. There's no one size formula that fits all. Uh, with different enterprises, with different organisations, um, the kind of impact that they're working on all differs from one to the other. Now, uh, and, and this is where I go with the, I go with the approach of you got to just try what comes in front of you, right? We've, we've tried to, to sort of test out many different approaches in the past. I was constantly doing experiments or different working models. <clears throat> One of the ways that we were trying to even look at, I mean, it's fairly easy for us to measure our social impact because uh, essentially what we do is that we train up marginalized communities, we partner up with an industry corporation, we set them for jobs. Uh, and so we just basically measure number of students that we train, number of students that we place, and what is the increased household income. It's pretty straightforward for us to measure that. Okay. But when I talk to a larger group of, of, of uh, change makers or social entrepreneurs out there, um, a lot of them are doing a lot more complex stuff, which, which you know, I mean, we, we had it simple. We chose a very uh, simplified approach. You're, you're measuring outcome, not impact. Uh, we're measuring the outcome, but the impact, I think, on the longer term of things is something that you, we can't measure that, uh, you know, within three months or six months. And a lot ah, that's another uh, uh, yeah. problem that you have to overcome because yeah. financial year, it's a calendar date, 12 months, you're done. Correct, yeah. But what you do is generational impact. That's right. It takes years, even one generation. So, so that's where, I guess, impact investing becomes a, a favourable subject because they're there to stay. Whereas if you're going to work with grants and CSR, sometimes it can be very periodical, right? Mm. You may work with one organization today, this year, and the next year you'll be moving on to another organization and another organization. Um, now, that, that doesn't allow for uh, one investor to come in and play that 
long-term partnership where you can then measure impact over three years, five years, ten years even. Right? <laughs>
I guess no harm done. No harm done. Yeah, you know, and and, and, you, know, and you make your own way. It's yeah. a it's a, a clean, healthy living, not sustainable, but yeah. you know, after all, this is what we do. We yeah. give them tools, and they decide. Yeah, and 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 that I guess also came as a as a mode of survival during the pandemic. Yeah. Right. I mean, resorts were shut. There was yeah. no tourism going on, so yeah. all a lot of staff were let off. Yeah. From their jobs. Um, when you talk to these uh, investors here um, uh, uh, at the Hassana Forum, yeah. um, what are the things that they're looking out for when it comes to them thinking on investing? I think, uh, I, I, I used to think that they had, they, they had pretty high demands in terms of what impact was supposed to look like. And Oh, it turns out the barrier is low. And, and in the last few days, actually, and, and which is why I, I took a lot of time before to learn up, you know, the, the, the reporting templates and how do you measure social, social impact. And I'm not even educated in that space, but, yeah. you know, we had to learn it because of what we do. Uh, but in conversations uh, with the, the YH team, the Yayasan Hasana team here over the last few days, um, I quote... Um, uh, Shahira in her speech yesterday, which I absolutely love what she said, which is leadership should start with a yes. And, and it just dawned upon me, say, wow, Ravi, all the while you were thinking that you had to have all your bullets in place before you want to start on making the life But that is a good people. prep, I guess, to, to, a good uh, skill to have. Yeah. You, you don't want to get uh, you know, uh, you know, caught in not being yeah. prepared. Yeah. But you see, so for, for guys like us who, you know, who come from this, the, the capital, we are, we are privileged enough to have education, we're exposed, we travel, uh, we have a lot of support around us to learn up these sort of practices. But um, what about the, the, the communities out there, you know? I mean, they are the best leaders in the future for their communities. And if we want to start connecting resources to them, for them to start, say, applying for funding and grants so that they can begin their own grassroots development programs, um, how would they learn these practices? And, and, and that's where I think some of the, the, the gaps are that needs to be looked into, is how do we simplify the processes for the communities out there who are not exposed and not educated? So leadership starts with a yes, um, as per Yasan Hassana Sashaira. The requirements of uh, uh, fund managers are not as high as initially, uh, or not as stringent as initially thought of. Um, do you find these kind of, um, I guess, items promising and optimistic for you to, you know, brave forward? Certainly. I think, uh, I think I've been overthinking a lot of the processes in the past as well. Um, you know, especially if you talk to a lot of the more mature organisations in impact investing or in amongst the foundations. Um, I think they truly understand that it takes a lot of time and resources to get formulas, right? There's a lot of trial and error that happens in the beginning. Mm. Uh, and, and I think that's where um, speaking to the, 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 the guys who've been in the game longer will, will actually be a, a smoother process for one to get started in this journey. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm a skeptic uh, and I've mentioned this uh, on this show many, many times. I feel that money managers will only spend if there is a financial incentive for them even though their heart wants to do the right thing, if there is no financial impetus for them to do so, they won't do it. Yeah. That's just on the money managers. On the philanthropic arms of all these organizations and family offices and corporates, if there's no incentives like tax breaks or any of that sort, it's very hard for them to deploy cash because they're restricted. They are managers of their own organization. It's not their own money after all. They need to find an excuse or a reason for, for them to deploy those kind of funds. Hence, the, the government having to step in and provide more financial incentives. Do you feel that that is the case that we need to make right now for the government uh, and the local authorities and the tax bodies to actually appreciate what uh, uh, folks that have capital want to do? They want to do good, so more tax incentives there. Yeah, I think I, I fully agree with you on that. I think that's where the government's role is, especially when it comes to matters of advocacy and policy. Mm. Um, one, thing that's actually, the one thing that comes as a piece of good news to everyone in this space is that uh, was when Bursa or the Securities Commission uh, put a mandatory requirement for all listed companies to provide their ESG report, their sustainability report. And uh, this now applies a higher level of pressure, I guess, on these corporations to really put their CSR budgets mm. to the right places because uh, they now have to really get down to measuring what mm. they're doing in terms of sustainability. Mm. 
and um, I think this has just opened a huge avenue of, of financing even to a lot of social enterprises, mm. academic institutions, uh, the non-profits at ground mm. level. Mm. Um, yeah, so the, the, the pot has just gotten bigger actually in terms of resources. So if people want to learn more and get connected with you and with Sky International Academy, how do they go about it? Well, you could drop me an email. Uh, it's at raviraj at sky.edu.my. That's R-A-V-I-R-A-J at sky.edu.my. Fantastic. That's a good way to connect with the good folks at Sky International Academy. That was Raviraj Salani, the CEO and principal of Sky International Academy. Um, we bring you a lot of these conversations here at the doorstep of the Hasana Forum and EVPN Conference. Um, I've interviewed uh, the Yes and Hasana boss, um, uh, Datuk Shairah Bazari. I've also spoken to the MD or the Managing Director of Khazana National Berhad, uh, Datuk Amirul Faisal, uh, where we talk about Dana Impact the uh, Impact Investing Fund of Khazana National uh, and with Shaira, I spoke with, uh, uh, to her on measuring, capturing value and how they can collaborate further with folks, perhaps even yourself that's currently watching this conversation in terms of how you can bring your own value to this solution of how we can bring impact to society. So there's a lot of these conversations that are happening right now. Just head off to astrowarring.com, find out more information there. My name is Ibrahim Sani, catch you in the next one.